On December the 12th, 1988, just outside Clapham in South London, the 614 from Poole ran into the back of the stationary 718 Basingstoke train at just under 40 miles an hour. Human error was the cause of this tragedy, but it was the poor crashworthiness of the carriages that was largely responsible for the number of casualties. Clapham forced BR into a major rethink. Six years on, there's a new design of carriage. In a few moments, we'll be showing you exclusive pictures of a test crash British rail stage to see whether this design would work in practice. But first, the theory. Throughout the 200-year history of passenger railways, improvements in carriage design have nearly always been born out of accidents. For the Victorians, trains were travel, but the romanticism of the age of steam wasn't matched by safety. For almost a century, the carriages that ferried third and first alike were built almost entirely of wood. Wooden chassis, wooden body. Stately, attractive, elegant, maybe. Collision resistant, no. Engineers finally abandoned wood when they realized that it offered no protection in an impact. In the Abba Mule crash of 1921, the train literally disintegrated. So from the 20s onwards, train designers started moving over to steel. But again, accidents were to reveal flaws in the early designs. The steel bodies were only bolted to the undercarriage and in a collision could become detached, with the passenger compartments completely folding up. So engineers continued to look for stronger constructions. The Mark I arrived in 1951 and was the start of a new breed. The chassis was made even stronger and for the first time was welded to the main body. Also, the ends of the carriages were specially strengthened. But plainly, that wasn't enough. All of the carriages at Clapham 37 years later were of this design. And since these came on the scene, all subsequent designs have attempted to pursue safety through strength. But none of them have yet been able to solve a fundamental problem in accidents, known as overriding. With current carriage design, any slight difference in height between trains colliding at speed will cause overriding. Unfortunately, overriding isn't solved by making carriages stronger. This test was done between just two carriages impacting at 38 miles an hour. With more carriages, the damage would be even worse. At Clapham, it was 12 carriages hitting another 12. The massive overriding that resulted devastated the front two carriages of the moving train. This is where all the deaths occurred. The need for a new approach was all too clear. In the end, it was the car industry that provided the inspiration. Crumple zones have been around in cars for almost 30 years. They absorb the energy of a crash, sacrificing the car body for the safety of the passengers. Just over a year ago, BR specified that all future passenger trains should contain crumple zones to improve safety. But although the crumple zone principle has been exhaustively tested on cars, until recently, no one had tried the same experiment on trains. Tonight, we bring you the first pictures of that test. Tomorrow's World was specially invited to witness a world first, a crash test between two entire trains. It took months to get ready for this, one of the biggest tests BR has ever staged. Endless instruments had to be fitted and old parcel vans rebuilt to include the new design ideas. On impact, the first thing to happen is that these couplers will break away and that will allow these plates to come together. Now the teeth will interlock, stopping one carriage from riding up over the other. But the massive energy involved in a collision like this has to be absorbed somewhere. And it should be absorbed in this, the crumple zone. Now underneath the bars and the steel honeycomb are designed in such a way as to concertina in a precisely controlled manner. As with cars, mannequins will experience the impact firsthand. The instruments inside them can accurately predict what injuries a human passenger would sustain. Now, with the combination of these design modifications, the engineers hope that there'll be no serious derailment, that the carriages won't ride over one another, and that this bit, 
where the passengers sit will remain undamaged. And that's essentially because the energy of the collision will be absorbed all the way down the train, not just at the front. The engineer in charge is Winston Resire. After 18 months of preparation, he knows that he'll only get one shot at this. With the test imminent, the trains are pulled into position. Just as at Clapham, one train will be stationary while the other drives into it at nearly 40 miles an hour. They'll judge this test successful if it's unspectacular. The last thing they want is a repeat of the destruction seen at Clapham. We are actually in position now, uh, carried out pre-test checks. Uh, request authority to proceed, please. Over. Well, while I can confirm that the site is safe and secure for test, you have permission to proceed with the test and you have a proceed signal. We're looking for 47 miles per hour on entry to the tunnel. Uh, Zycon 1 to control, we are now moving. Over. The driver has to push the crash train to exactly the right speed and at the last moment disengage and apply his brakes while the carriages hurtle on. Now. Seemed, seemed, seemed to go very, very well yeah, indeed. It was not a single wheel derailed. Brilliant. What you expected? Well, at first sight, an amazing success, and Winston is a happy man. So, the crumple zones did their job. They did indeed, as you can see, the, the body end structure in the crumple zone has uh, crumpled exactly as designed, including the understructure just below here. At this interface, the Crumpling on both sides shows that the collision energy has been distributed right down the train and not concentrated at the impacted end. And no overriding either? Yes, you can see that the plates have meshed and would prevent any overriding. Now, the passenger part of each compartment has remained perfectly intact, no broken glass, and I'm sure you're very pleased there's been no derailment whatsoever. If we can get that distribution of energy, which we have here, we would protect the passenger compartment, and uh, the fact that we have no wheels derailed at all uh, is a very good result. In the weeks since the crash, they've been able to take a closer look at those crucial moments during the collision. In fact, collisions would be more accurate. As intended, milliseconds after the initial impact, there were several more as all the carriages piled into each other. In all, between the ten carriages, there were nine separate collisions rather than one big one, limiting the damage done to any single carriage. It is, though, still a huge impact. So how would the passengers fare? British Rail was unwilling to release slow motion film of the mannequins on the grounds that it's part of an ongoing project. But they say their results show that none of them sustained the equivalent of fatal injuries. If so, that's impressive. But what is clear is that with the new design, at last the problem of overriding may have been eliminated. The first 41 trains incorporating the new design will soon be in service. So far, so good. But in January, British Rail revealed that it had no plans to order any more. So for the time being, it seems as if less than 5% of passenger trains will contain crumple zones.